Hi, this is Pastor Ron from Alpha Lions Den Ministries. This is a home of the truth seekers. Now listen, if you're a seeker of the truth, if you're a truth seeker, we're looking for you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're seeking for Jesus and you really want to know the truth, because it's only the truth that you know will set you free. Look, if you're, if you're tuning in on television, you can watch us on Cornerstone Television. That's ctvn.org. It's in Wall, Pennsylvania. I would also like you to tune in to Crossing Paths Ministries. That is crossingpaths.org. You can also find that on the internet, or you can watch us on Cornerstone Television every single Wednesday at 5.30 and every single Sunday at 12 o'clock. If you have the opportunity, please DVD us, and if you want to come personally and meet us at the Lion's Den, and you're a true seeker, come visit us. We're in Derry, Pennsylvania, 716 West 4th Avenue. Look forward to seeing you real soon. Easter. So if you missed the first two, you can find us on YouTube. If you're watching us on television, you can go to Ron Kosor, K-O-S-O-R, search us out on YouTube. You can also, also be looking up very shortly. We have a new channel coming on called Truth Seekers. You can also find us on crossingpaths.org. That's crossingpaths.org. And we're also on the Faith and Family Channel on Cornerstone Television out of Wall, Pennsylvania. Our show on Crossing Pass airs every single Wednesday at 5.30 and every single Sunday at 12. So, if you've missed any of our series, that's where you could find them. Well, but like I said, today is part three of the series that we're doing on Easter. And... Um, you know, in order to rightly divide the word of truth, we, we, we preach and teach here that you could put every single man, woman, and child that's ever been born into four categories. You're either born, physically born a Jew or physically born a Gentile. And out of those two groups, if you're a Jew that has accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're a Messianic Jew. And if you're a Gentile that accepts Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a born-again Christian. So those are the four groups of people on the earth today. Now listen, this is very important to, to realize this. God has just shown me this recently. But I know the Messianic movement has been in my heart for about 20 years understanding that that is one of the end time, one of the last day signs that is going to prepare the church for the return of the Messiah, the Messianic movement. So the first sign that people look at is Israel becoming a nation. Okay, Israel became a nation in 1948. Then we know that Jerusalem has been declared the state capital. 
Now, out of that, we have the Messianic Jewish movement that is, that is preparing the earth for the return of the Messiah. The most important thing that God has shown me basically in the past week is this. In order to have the Messianic movement and everything to be being established at it, as it is on the earth today, the sign, listen to this, in, in Matthew 12, 40, the scribes and Pharisees come unto Jesus and they ask him for a sign. Correct? They said, what is the sign? What will be one of the signs of his coming? And he said, this shall be the sign. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three full days and three full nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three full days and three full nights. This will be a sign of the end times and the last days. Now listen, very, very few people on the earth are preaching this today. The sign, everybody, Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation is seeking for a sign. But the sign they're going to be given is the sign of Jonah. Now, this has hardly never been taught in the history of the world. As I said, since Jesus was crucified in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. Since that time, we had 1,500 years that's called the Dark Ages. No real spiritual movement on the earth. The Romans set up a one world rule. They had a religion that came out of Rome that ruled the earth. Protestants like us, people that are not dedicated Catholics, Protestant people have come out of Catholicism. One way, shape, or form, they've come out of Catholicism. So listen, when Martin Luther came out, he did his best to come out of Catholicism. As John Calvin came out, he did his best to come out of Catholicism. So as Methodists, Lutherans, Baptists, Pentecostals, they've all come out of Catholicism. But yet we've, we still have baggage that we need to get rid of. But in this process of restoration, do you hear what I'm trying to communicate? In this process of restoration, one of the final signs that we're going to be able to see is this. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. Three full days, three full nights. It is going to be a sign of the last days and the coming of the Messiah. This was not preached 50 years ago. This was not preached 100 years ago. Very little here and there. But so we know that once Israel became a nation in 1948, we had to have a nation. Out of that nation, we had to have a state capital, which is Jerusalem. Then we began to have Jewish people that assembled in those places. Out of those Jews are Messianic Jews now from all over the world. They're accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Jesus said, this will be the sign. We're living in that time. We're living in that time. We look today, the world's celebrating this Easter season right now. And, and it's about as far as you can get from the truth. On the way that things have really happened according to our Bibles. It couldn't be any further from the truth. You couldn't try to get it away from the truth as much as it is. But we're going to take today and we're going to, we're going to dissect, we're going to rightly divide the word of truth. We're going to look at these three full days and three full nights out of two of the Gospels and really see how this event that has been labeled Easter by the Catholic Church, we're really going to see how it truly unfolds. And we're going to come to the conclusion of the, the truth of the matter. So if you have your Bibles, turn to God, the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke. 
Hallelujah. I thank every one of you that's here today. You've been handpicked to hear this message. I know a lot of our folks have to go with their families and relatives and do the things they need to do. I hope they can take the truth wherever they go. This time of the year is like shooting fish in a barrel for me. I'm just running around and everybody's telling me Happy Easter. So I have a great opportunity to be able to witness to people. Because I, I personally don't celebrate Easter. So when they ask me why I don't celebrate Easter, I have the opportunity to tell them why. And, it, and it's a great story. I mean, I ask them if they can tell me who Easter is. Most of them can't tell me who Easter is. Then I can ask them about the Easter eggs and Easter bunny and all those things and how they all fit. And it's amazing how many people have no idea. But yet it amazes me how many people are, are worshiping this on the earth today. So we're, we're going to look at this. Jesus said, as a matter of fact, I said turn to Mark, but keep your finger there in Mark and I want to show you the scripture in Matthew. It's in Matthew 12, 40. Matthew 12, verse 40. Listen, eternity's a long time. I want to make sure we're all going to heaven. Amen. Listen, if we take the Bible away from what we know, we know nothing. If you erase the Bible from, from us and you take away the truth, we have nothing to stand on. Now, through the ages, there's been pioneers. Through the ages, there's been pioneers that were out of the box. I mean, it takes people to be able to stand on the truth, and this is the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help us God. So in Matthew 12, verse 39, listen to this. This, this is where we are today. But he, Jesus, answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with the generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. This will be a sign of the end time last day church. They will come to the full realization that what they have been taught by the mother church has been a lie. I'm telling you, you're going to see a spark in the church. They're going to be coming out of the lies and deception that they were taught for 1,500 years. This is going to set the stage for the return of the Messiah. Now go over to Mark 15 and we're going to look at exactly, exactly how this has taken place. Mark 14. Mark 14. He proclaims here right at the beginning, Mark 14, this is exactly the same. If you have your pencils and papers out, I hope you do today. I hope you have something you can write on. If not, just write in your Bible. Because I don't know if I'll ever be able to put this together like I'm going to do it this morning. Mark 14, 1 says this. After two days, it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now we know what we teach and preach here just so I can give you a window right off the bat. We know one thing for sure. We know that three full days and three full nights could not be put from Friday at 6 p.m. until before Sunday at sunrise. We know that's not the truth. But yet mostly 90% of the earth today would be celebrating Easter Sunday, whatever level you're at or whatever you believe where that is. 
But you have to agree with me on this. If Jesus went into the tomb, er, people are all believing this. If he went into the tomb on Friday at 6 p.m., and he'd come out of the tomb before the first day of the week, which is Sunday, before the sunrise. If you just went from Friday evening to Saturday evening, that's only one day. There's no day, no way you're going to get three full days and three full nights from Friday evening at 6 till Sunday sunrise, before the sunrise. So, if we know one thing, that's not the truth. So what is the truth? The truth is we preach it, teach it, believe it with the majority of the people on the earth today that are, that are just running with this revelation is this. We, we've studied over the last two weeks. Like I said, you need to look at, look at that. But on Tuesday night was the betrayal. Tuesday night, or Tuesday night, the way we look at it, was the betrayal. That is the night that Jesus partook of the Lord's Supper. It was not the Passover meal. It was not a Seder meal. It was the Lord's Supper. And when the Lord took the bread, that word bread is spelled artos, A-R-T-O-S in the Greek. And what that, what that word meant was, was leaven bread. It was bread that had leaven in it. This is a big point for people to understand that believe in the Seder meal and say this was a Passover meal. It was not. It was just like an average everyday supper that Jesus had with the believers when he was ushering in a new covenant. So on that night, a Tuesday night, they partook of this Lord's Supper. Jesus said there would be one of them that would betray him. So that happened on Tuesday night where he was betrayed, had the Lord's Supper, went to the Garden of Gethsemane. They, they took him away. Wednesday morning, they began the crucifixion process about the third hour of the day, which would be our nine in the morning. There was complete darkness over the entire earth from the sixth hour of the day to the ninth hour of the day. This would be our 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock period, complete darkness over the earth on Wednesday. As we have learned in our previous studies, that day after the Passover, that next day, the, the, day, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a Sabbath. So they had to get the Messiah's body into the grave before dark. So there's a period that we've learned, it's called the twilight period. I say it was probably from like 6 p.m. to about 7.30, at the latest 8 o'clock. It gave them a window. Because if you was caught out doing any work at all, and they thought it was dark, they could have killed you. Because it would have technically been called a Sabbath. That first day after the Passover that starts that evening, when the Messiah was crucified, is a Sabbath. Very, very important to understand that. So then we know that Jesus, from that Wednesday evening, he was in the tomb three full days and three full nights. Now that would be from Wednesday at 6 p.m., let's say, to Thursday is day one, Thursday to Friday is day two, and Friday to Saturday would be the third full, three full days and three full nights. Now, I believe God is so precise according to the scriptures. I believe that the Messiah was put in that tomb at 630 during the twilight period. I believe that's exactly 72 hours when he come out of the grave. I personally believe God is that precise on fulfilling what he says that he would do. Now, for people to believe in a Good Friday, Sunday sunrise service, is just simply a tradition of men. Jesus says in Matthew 15, listen to this. He said, in vain do they worship me. 
In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Jesus himself said there are people right now this weekend during this season, in vain are they worshiping me. They think they're doing right. They don't even know Jesus. I mean, think about that. There's people out there today that do, they don't even know Jesus. And they're honoring a, a traditional holiday that has nothing to do with Jesus and the true death, burial, and resurrection. So he told them in Mark 14, 1, after two days, it's the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The chief priest and the scribes saw, scribes saw how they may take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, no, not during the feast. That's the way religious people are. They didn't want to crucify him, crucify him during the feast. Verse 12, now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? So this is still that evening. They're talking about going and preparing for the Passover, preparing for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It took preparation. It would be just like if, if, if Adam was going, roasting a pig. And he was doing this for the whole church. But there was a day of preparation. You got to get everything ready. You got to buy all the products. You got to roast the pig. But we eat it the, the next day. So Jesus was betrayed on that Tuesday night during the time of this pre preparation window. Verse 16 says, His disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them. And they began to prepare for the Passover. Verse 17. In the evening Jesus came with the twelve. And now as they sat and ate. This is what we call today the Lord's Supper. This happened on a Tuesday evening. And then evening came with the twelve. Now as they sat, Jesus said, Surely I say to you. One of you who eats with me will betray me. We know this is the night of the betrayal. Now, I want you to jot this as a side note. The Mark 14, 1 is exactly the same as Matthew 26, 1. They're direct parallels. What I just read to you in Mark 14, 16 is exactly the same as Matthew 26, 17. Where they ate the Lord's Supper here in Mark 14, 17 is where they ate the Lord's Supper is exactly the same as Matthew 26, verses 20 to 29. It's two exactly the same detailed descriptions of what happened during this window of three full days and three full nights. It is the only way that it can humanly possibly take place. Now, in this dialogue in, in Mark 14, verse 22, it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it to them and said, This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said unto them, This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. As surely I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. This was the Tuesday night. This was Tuesday night. Tuesday night. The Garden of Gethsemane was a Tuesday night. Mark 15 verse 1. Verse 15, 1, it says immediately in the morning. So what morning is this? This is Wednesday morning. Immediately in the morning. This is exactly the same as Matthew 27, verse 1. 
I'm just showing you how both Gospels are identically the same on how they reveal and how three full days and three full nights unfold. This is the only way that it can take place. This is the truth of how it happened. So Mark 15 verse 1 is exactly the same as Matthew 27 verse, verse 1. He said, immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered and said unto them, it is as you say. Now let's go over to verse 25, Mark 15, 25. Now listen to this. Now it was the third hour. It was the and it was the third hour. So what time is that our time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. So this is a detailed timeline. Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Now it was the third hour of the day, Wednesday morning at 9 a.m., and they crucified Jesus. This was the beginning of the crucifixion process. Procedure. It didn't happen in one second. It took some time. And the inscription of his accusation was written above the king of the Jews. Verse 33. Verse 33. Now when the sixth hour had come, the sixth hour of the day according to God's timetable, the sixth hour of the day is what time? It's exactly 12 o'clock, 12 noon on Wednesday. Hey, listen, I think this is extremely important for us to know. How can, how can Christians, how can Christians be arguing and condemning one another for smoking a cigarette, chewing tobacco, wearing short sleeves or long sleeves, when they don't even know the breakdown on how the Messiah was crucified, died, buried and rose again. How can we be that messed up? How, how can the majority of the church that come out of Catholicism still be following Catholicism on one of the greatest points in the entire Bible? We're totally missing the mark. I think it's extremely important to know what happened to the Messiah. Now when the sixth hour had come, 12 o'clock on Wednesday, there was darkness over the entire land until the ninth hour of the day. So the ninth hour, it, it falls at three o'clock on that Wednesday. So this is exactly what happened to Jesus. It's an exact breakdown. It's exactly the same as what happened in Matthew. All this, the third, the sixth, and the ninth hour, is in Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. It's a breakdown of the exact same crucifixion process, what happened the sixth hour of the day, what happened the ninth hour of the day. It's exactly the same. The sixth hour of the day is when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And he gave up the spirit. Mark 15, 38, the veil of the temple was torn from top to the bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Verse 42 is extremely important. Now, when evening had come, what evening are we at? Wednesday evening, because it was the preparation day. This is the Passover day when the Lamb is crucified. When Jesus fulfilled the feast of Passover, it was on this day. He said, now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, the day of the Passover, when they sacrificed the Passover lambs, Jesus was our sacrifice. Jesus had to die. He was the sacrifice for our sins. He had to fulfill it on the exact day. It could not have been on a Friday. 
There is no way humanly possible it could have ever happened on a Friday. And that he was out in the grave on Sunday morning at sunrise service. It could just, it just don't happen. It didn't happen and it never has happened and it never will happen. But yet, how can people just believe the lie? They're like sheep. I'm talking leaders don't know. I listen to some of the most wisest preachers in the world and they're proclaiming this week is Good Friday and Easter Sunday. It's just not been revealed yet. The importance of it has not been revealed to the church. Why? Because Jesus said this would be the sign of the end. It would be the sign of Jonah. It's going to be the sign of the return of the Messiah to the earth. That for 2,000 years, nobody's really been proclaiming it the way it needs to be taught. This is the importance of this. How can we have missed it? There is no way that we could have missed it this bad unless there was not a reason for it. The reason is because Jesus proclaimed that this would be the last generation that would proclaim this as a sign. What sign? The sign of Jonah. That as he was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, the whale, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three full days, three full nights. Not Good Friday to Easter Sunday morning. It's a sign of the coming of the Messiah. Now when evening had come, Wednesday evening, because it was the preparation day, the Passover, that is the day before the Sabbath. The day before the high Sabbath is the Passover. The day after the Passover that starts at twilight is a Sabbath day. This is very important for you to understand because Joseph of Arimathea had to get the body of Jesus. He had to go to Pilate and say, look, I want to get the body of Jesus. Well, why? Because I need to get him in a tomb. Well, what's the hurry? Well, it's six o'clock. The Sabbath starts. And if not, you're going to have some bodies out there hanging on a cross, laying on the ground, wherever they were. So I got to get him. I got to get his body prepared. I got to get him in a tomb, seal the tomb up and get home before the Sabbath starts. Because if I'm caught out there during the Sabbath, they're going to put me to death. Do you understand? So that puts us at Wednesday at 6 o'clock. It's that Sabbath, not a weekly Sabbath, not Saturday. No, when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, the Passover, that is the day before the Sabbath. What Sabbath? We studied it for the previous two weeks. That day after the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that day is a holy convocation. Verse 43. Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead and summoned the centurion. He asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found, so when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen, took him down, wrapped him in linen, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb, and Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. Mark 16.1. This is very important. Mark 16.1 is exactly the same as Matthew 28.1. Mark 16.1 is exactly the same as Matthew 28 verse 1. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, what Sabbath? It's the Sabbath that went from Wednesday at 6 p.m. till Thursday at 6 p.m. That's a Sabbath. 
It's the first day after the Passover. God counts days from evening to evening. As we studied in Genesis 1, God counts days from evening through the morning till the next morning is day one. So the Passover was a day. The Passover was a complete day that started that Tuesday evening that went to Wednesday evening. He had to make sure Jesus was in the tomb before that Sabbath that started at twilight on Wednesday. When that, path, when that Sabbath was over, from Wednesday at 6 p.m. till Thursday at 6 p.m., that Sabbath had finished. There's a window there during Friday that they could get some things done before the weekly Sabbath happens. Because don't forget, the weekly Sabbath is from Friday at 6 p.m. until Saturday at 6 p.m. Are you with me? Now watch. This is very important. Now when the Sabbath was passed, it was the high Sabbath, the Sabbath after the Passover. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome, after that first Pat, after the first Sabbath, they went out and bought spices. What day was this? Friday during the day. Friday during the day in between the, the Passover Sabbath that went from Wednesday at 6 p.m. until Thursday at 6 p.m. That was a Sabbath. They couldn't do anything. So at sunrise the next day at Friday morning, they had time from Friday morning until 6 p.m. when that weekly Sabbath started. They had a window there that they could go out and get spices to prepare whatever they needed to prepare to anoint the body of Jesus. This happened Friday. So now when the Sabbath had ended on Thursday evening, when it was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices that they may come. They couldn't have bought them on Wednesday during the day. Because it was a Sabbath from Wednesday evening to Thursday evening. That was a Sabbath. So that they may come and anoint him. Now, listen, they couldn't come and anoint him from Friday evening at 6 till Saturday at 6. Why? Because it's a Sabbath. It's the weekly Sabbath. They went and bought the spices from Friday at sunrise when they could be out buying things to prepare things to get him, to get his spices, get back to the house by Friday evening, it says that they may come and anoint him. So very early in the morning, the first day of the week, what day is that? It takes us to Sunday morning. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's the way our weeks run. So the first day of the week, early in the morning, before the sun had risen, they come to the tomb, and when they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up and saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He's already gone. He is not here. See, look, the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is gone before you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he said. So why do we get so tangled up and, and hung up on the traditions of men when it has nothing to do with the Bible? How can people for so many years preach a Friday at 6 p.m. crucifixion and a resurrection that happens Sunday morning before sunrise? When it is not scriptural, according to the Bible, there is no way humanly possible that that could happen that way. 
God, I am telling you, this is a part of the process of restoration. I've just really seen this this week. It is one of the last day signs. It's the only way that so many people cannot see something so simple. Jesus said this would be the sign. What sign? The sign of Jonah. For three full days and three full nights. Somebody got to preach it. We got to come out from that old church and those old ways of teaching. And somebody got to preach and teach the truth. Now, if you turn back, if you go back to Matthew, just real quick so you can see this, I'll just hit the highlights on this for you. We've already talked about this, but I'm going to show you the highlights real quick. I told you Matthew 26, 1. I mean, verse 2, he said, You know that after two days it's the Passover, and the Son of Man will be delivered you to be crucified. This is that two-day window. He told them to go out, begin to prepare for the Passover. Twenty-six seventeen is the exact same as Mark fourteen sixteen. Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to him saying, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, You go into a city, certain man say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand, this Moedim. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Verse 19 is Tuesday evening. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they were eating, this is the Lord's Supper. He said, surely one of you will betray me. Verse 26, as they were eating, this was not the Passover. This was not the Seder meal. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. That word in the Greek is artos. It is not unleavened bread. This is extremely crucial to understand this. The Passover was the feast of unleavened bread. They could not eat any unleavened bread during that period. Jesus, when he had this meal with them, he ate bread that had leaven in it. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of a new covenant. This is the ushering in of the new covenant. The church hasn't proclaimed this properly for 2,000 years. There's remnants here and there that are proclaiming the truth. Now listen, that night was Tuesday evening. It was Tuesday, Matthew 26, Matthew 26, verses 20 to 29. Matthew 27, verse 1. Matthew 27, verse 1 is where we see the morning came. What morning? Wednesday morning. It's the exact same as Mark chapter 15, verse 1. That morning. It's a Wednesday morning. All the elders, chief priests, people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. They gave him over to Pontius Pilate. Wednesday morning, early. So we know that he was crucified. Started at 9 a.m., the third hour of the day. This is technically when the crucifixion process procedure started. Now, if you look in Matthew 27, verse 45. Matthew 27, verse 45. This is exactly the same as Mark 15, verses 25 and 33. Now from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, remember this is lunchtime on Wednesday to the third to the three p.m. Now from sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the entire land, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This happened from Wednesday, complete darkness from twelve o'clock to three o'clock. And Jesus said, Why hast thou forsaken me? The veil was torn in verse 51, Matthew 27, 51. 
Behold, the veil in the temple was torn, exactly the same as Mark. Matthew 27, 57, the evening of the preparation day is the same as, as Mark 15, 42. It says here in Matthew, Now when evening had come, there was a rich man from Arimathea, his name was Joseph. Exactly the same as Mark chapter 15, verse 42. I'm just showing you it is exactly the same in two of the Gospels, verse for verse, word for word, an exact layout description from Tuesday evening to Saturday evening. It's a detailed day timer, hour by hour breakdown of how this happened. The only way the church could miss this for 2,000 years is if it was divinely instructed by God. It had been hidden. The revelation has not been seen. But when they come and ask Jesus and said, show us the sign, show us a sign of thy coming. He said, I'm going to give you one sign. It's the sign of Jonah. The son of man will be in the belly of the earth as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three full days and three full nights. That is one of the greatest signs at the end time coming of the Messiah. That the church will understand this revelation. Because I'm telling you, up to now, they don't understand it. Now they may say, well, once you start telling them about who Easter is and what she's all about, well, they don't serve Easter. Well, somebody's serving it because there's no way you're serving the Lord as it's proclaimed in the scripture. You're, you're honoring the, three day, the, the Friday evening to the Sunday morning resurrection. It's not scriptural. I just read verse 57, correct? When that evening came, it was Wednesday evening. Verse 59, Joseph took the body. He wrapped it in linen cloth. He departed. Mary Magdalene was there, the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, which had followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how this deceiver said, After three days, I'll rise again. Three full days, three full nights, Jesus promised he would rise again. This was a sign that God would do exactly what he said he would do. It was not a Friday evening till a Sunday early sunrise morning resurrection. If it's not the truth, they got to be a lie. You can't have both. Therefore commanded that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night. They thought they were going to steal him away. Now Matthew 28, 1. Matthew 28, 1. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, that word Sabbath in the Greek is Sabbaths too. Why? Because what we saw in, in Mark 16, verse 1, there was two Sabbaths. There was a weekly Sabbath, which is the first day after the Passover. From Wednesday evening till Thursday evening at 6, remember that was a Sabbath. So they could not do anything in that window. Friday, we know Friday sometime during daylight is when they went out and bought the spices. They couldn't have done it on the, on the Sabbath. Then the weekly Sabbath falls Friday evening at 6 p.m. at that twilight till Saturday evening at 6 p.m. So they couldn't do anything then. That's a whole nother Sabbath taken out. So during this window, you have two Sabbaths. You have the high Sabbath that's proclaimed the first day after the Passover. So we know the truth. The Passover took place on that Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening. Then from Wednesday evening to Thursday evening, that was a Sabbath. They couldn't do anything. The next window would be from that Thursday evening to Friday evening. That was when they had some time to go up and get the things to, to prepare Jesus' body. They had to go out and buy the spices and the anointments and the things that the women wanted to take to the tomb to make sure the body of Jesus was okay. They had to do that Friday during daylight before the Sabbath started.
because the weekly Sabbath starts on Friday at, in that window from 6 to 7 p.m. They could not do anything from Friday at 6 till Saturday at 6 at daylight. So they weren't out there running around in the evening at pitch dark. They said, look, we'll just go out first thing in the morning, the first day of the week, and take care of the body of Jesus. So when they got there Saturday morning at sunrise, Jesus did not rise that Sunday during the day, as most people were proclaiming today. He was already gone Saturday evening at twilight. They don't even know what twilight is. Look, they don't know what twilight is. Listen, they don't know what twilight is. They have no idea what Easter is. They have no idea who Easter is or what Easter is. They have no idea about sunrise services. Ezekiel 8, it's a, it's a pagan ritual. It's a pagan holiday. When they went out and put their back to the church, faced the sun, they did an early sunrise service. Number four, where, did, where is Lent in all this? Where's the 40 days of Lent in all this? It's not in there. Because that's another pagan ritual, another pagan holiday. Five, the Easter bunny. Where'd that come from? Six, Easter eggs. Where'd that come from? Seven, Ash Wednesday. Where'd that come from? Not in the Bible. None of these things are in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. Not once. It's not in the Bible. Not once. Good Friday. Where did Good Friday come from? It's the only day of the week they couldn't do anything. It was a Sabbath. Friday to Saturday evening. Nothing. They went out and bought some spices that day. As far as the Messiah. Nope. Sunrise service and the sun, early morning Sunday resurrection. It never happened. According to what God says, it never happened. But yet they'll condemn us. I mean, I'm telling you, this is one of the worst things, but yet they nitpick on people's life and what people did and what they didn't do and all these things. They're so easy to condemn people, they strain at a net and swallow a camel. Now, after the Sabbaths in Matthew 28, 1, as the first day of the week began to dawn, as the sun just began to break, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, he came and rolled back the stone from the door, and he sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as the snow. And all the guards shook for fear of him, and they became like dead men. Then the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. How? Just as he said. How did Jesus say? The sign would be the sign of Jonah. Three full days, three full nights, he would be in the belly of the earth. Why, why, why have people taught for 2,000 years? It was Friday evening and he was, and he was resurrected on Sunday morning. I'm telling you, it wasn't the right proper time. He is not here for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And indeed he is going on before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went up quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, guess what? Behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. See, this is what we need to be doing today. We need to be rejoicing. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid to go tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Now where they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all the things that had happened. 
When they assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave him a very large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews, even until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus, which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. Listen, this is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. This is the only way that this could happen. And this is the only way that it did happen. Jesus was betrayed on Tuesday evening. Now, for some of my friends out there to preach the Seder meal, the, the, I think it's called the Haggadah. The Haggadah is not even in the Bible. Then for a lot of my friends that preach the rabbinical teachings, a, a lot of the rabbinical teachings, these rabbis that are teaching the rabbinical teachings, they don't even know Jesus. Do you understand that? The majority of the rabbis that are teaching these rabbinical teachings on the Torah, they don't even know Jesus. Now, they'll, they'll point towards certain things, and this is what the Messiah is going to do, and this and that. And some of them that are Messianic Jews or Messianic rabbis, they, they see the correlation. But what we got to watch is in this window of time that we're li living in, that the Jews don't pull us back to the Old Covenant. It, it never worked that way. They had, they had 2,000 years to figure it out, and when the Messiah came, they crucified him. And since then, there's been a 2,000... All right, what's Pastor Rowan coming back at you? For all you truth seekers that, that tune in to our sermons on YouTube, you can YouTube us. For all you YouTubers out there, just do Rowan Kosor, K-O-S-O-R, or you can YouTube Truth Seekers. We're also on Crossing Paths Ministries that airs on Cornerstone Television out of Wall, Pennsylvania. Crossing Paths is on every single Wednesday at 5.30 and every Sunday at 12. So you can tune on and watch us or please DVD us. We're also on the Family Faith Network, the Faith, the, uh, Faith Family Channel. And um, I look forward to you tuning in on that also. You can find us on the web. Hope you enjoyed today's message. Please tune in next week. And for all you true seekers, keep on seeking.